Okay. These are my disclosures. I'm an employee of Lentigen, a Meltonian biotech company, and I have submitted a patent for the work that's described herein. Okay, so the major research question for us was, can novel HIV-1-based lentiviral vectors um, encoding multispecific anti-HIV CAR T cells enable modified T cells to recognize and broadly kill HIV-infected cells, but also ensure that those CAR T cells are protected? And so I hope to convince you today that LV-modified multispecific dual CAR T cells potently suppress broad strands of HIV up to 99% and persist and eliminate HIV-infected cells um, in vivo, and these cells are protected from HIV infection. And so this work is important because I think it's the first report of a new approach about how to engineer a new type of CAR T cell that's most likely more potent than some of the traditional CARs that have been described today and used in other studies. And this is related to a cure because, um, like most have already described before, anti-HIV dual CAR T cells um, would also be administered as a single infusion, which is aimed at controlling HIV viral loads in the absence of antiretroviral therapy for the life of the patient. And so I'm very excited about this research, and I know my team is, um, because dual CAR T cell therapy may actually offer a pathway towards functionally curing HIV, um, but also offer a new way to engineer um, anti-HIV CAR T cells. And so um, the first... Um, thing that we think about when engineering these multispecific CAR T cells is actually the binders. And so um, we actually select three different binders that target well-conserved sites on the HIV envelope protein. And so for that selection, we like to take um, uh, binders that are potentially broadly reactive, um, highly potent, um, can prevent escape, but then also protect the CAR T cells. And so... Um, Two of these binders is actually developed by our collaborator um, who was at the NCI at the time, but now at the University of Pittsburgh, Dr. Dimitro, and that's called MD1.22 and M36.4. And so both of these are single domain um, 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 proteins. Um, MD1.22 is a single domain CD4, and so essentially it would block um, HIV binding to the native um, CD4 receptor. Um, M36.4 is a heavy chain only engineered antibody domain, and it targets the co receptor uh, binding site on GP120. And so, together, um, Dr. Dimitro's group showed that when you make this antibody fusion protein of MD1.22 plus M36.4, you can potently neutralize all strands of HIV, and you, we don't see any evidence that um, HIV can um, escape from this um, um, combination. Um, and last but not least, to potentiate the protection of the cells and also the multi-targeting capacity, we select C46 um, peptide, which, is, uh, which targets GP41 near the MPRO region and functions as a fusion inhibitor and has been shown by other groups um, to essentially protect CAR T cells from infection and gene-modified um, cells in general. So we start with the traditional, um, what we call monocar architecture, which means one molecule um, car architecture, or one car and one cell. And it um, essentially, we take for the monospecific car, the MD1.22 domain, infuse it to a CDA transmembrane domain, followed by 41BB to promote CAR T cell persistence, and then also the CD3 zeta for T cell signaling. To make a bispecific monocar T cell, we link MD1.22 to M36.4. But based on work by Ed Berger's group, um, the space in between those antigen binding domains are very important. So we rationed that perhaps we could separate these two domains across two cars, making this novel type or unique type of car architecture, which we call dual car or two molecule car architecture. Um, to further potentiate multi-targeting the CAR T cells, again, we add the C46 peptide to the end terminus of MD1.22, and we have now a tri-specific dual CAR T cell. So in my talk today, just to make things simple, um, I will refer to monospecific monocars and bispecific monocars as just conventional monocar T cells. And then um, for the bispecific and tri-specific dual CAR T cells, I will refer to them as multi-specific dual CAR T cells. 
And so just to jump right into the data, um, initially we worked with um, Dr. Christina Oceanbauer's and John Capps groups using some infectious molecular clones of HIV that express uh, different um, HIV envelope glycoproteins. And we found that overall anti-HIV CAR T cells were highly potent in suppressing HIV infection um, for um, different uh, strains uh, found in America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. But really, what really stood out in these assays early on was that there was a unique type of CAR that was working much better than other type of the monocar T cells, and that was the multi-specific dual CAR T cells. Later, we went on to challenge, um, uh, to set up these assays challenging um, PBMCs with a number of different viral strains and then incubating them with CAR T cells. Some of the strains that we use um, actually have envelopes that are broadly, are resistant to broadly neutralizing antibodies like BR01 or 3BNC117. Um, and we found that, again, multi-specific dual CAR T cells um, broadly suppress um, HIV infection up to 99% and are superior to monocar T cells. Similar to um, Ed Berger's group and Scott Kitchen groups that showed that these uh, CAR T cells that are engineered with CD4-like domains are permissive to HIV infection, we also saw that the single domain CAR T cells engineered with MD1.22 in some donors were also permissive to HIV infection. However, if you place the M36.4 domain or a combination of M36.4 plus C46, now CAR T cells are protected from HIV infection. So this is very critical to the engineering of these CAR T cells. In order to evaluate the in vivo efficacy of these CAR T cells, we partnered up with Dr. Harris Goldstein at Albert Einstein College of Medicine that has this really nice um, humanized mouse model of intrasplenic HIV infection. One of the advantages of using this model is that it can rapidly um, develop HIV infection um, within only seven days. So you go from not knowing if CAR T cells work to one week later knowing for sure that your CAR T cells are efficacious or not. And so what we found, again, um, in vivo was that dual CAR T cells were more potent than monocar T cells. Um, and in fact, not only were they more potent, they were able to eliminate HIV-infected cells better than their monocar T cell counterparts. Um, and interestingly, all CAR T cells persist, even monocar T cells persist. However, they are unable to fully control HIV infection in mice cohorts, uh, so suggesting that um, monocar, uh, monocar T cells may be less effective um, in, in trying to control HIV infection in actual patients. And so then we took the biospecific duo car plus, um, or not plus, but the biospecific duo car and ran it head to head with the tri-specific duo car because the hope was that maybe we can further increase the potency by having this tri-specific duo car. And what we saw is that both types of constructs function very similar. They eliminate um, more than 99% of the infection in vivo compared to uh, untransduced T cells. But what was interesting is that mice treated with just untransduced T cell controls, that means that they don't have any CAR expression, the T cells were completely de depleted in these groups. However, when you treated mice with dual CAR T cells, now T cells were protected and you can uh, mitigate the CD4 T cell depletion that was observed in mice. So in conclusion, uh, multispecific dual CAR T cells potently suppress raw strands of HIV up to 99% in vitro, eliminated HIV infected cells in humanized, um, humanized mouse models, and were protected from HIV infection. Um, we believe it's the combined, um, the combination of multiple envelope targeting domains and a unique dual CAR architecture that really drives the potency of these um, multispecific dual CAR T cells. And um, despite the fact that monocar T cells persist in mice, they don't do a good job of controlling the infection across all mice. Some mice control, some mice don't. Um, whereas with dual CAR T cells, all mice control the infection and they persist and they can eliminate HIV infected cells. So uh, future direction of this project is to continue interrogating the in vivo efficacy of these dual CAR T cells using more stringent humanized mouse models. So we plan to um, start with Dr. Harris Goldstein working with ARD suppressed donor CAR T cells and then assessing CAR mediated elimination of reactivated HIV infected cells. We also hope to um, start a phase one, two A clinical trial that's planned for early 2020 at USF, UCSF with Dr. Stephen Deeks and then later at the Jacoby Medical Center, which is affiliated with Albert Einstein College of Medicine, to evaluate the safety and efficacy of this dual CAR T cell therapy.
And so with that, I would love to thank my um, team at Lentigen, especially um, my, um, my boss, Dr. Bora Dropolis, which has provided a tremendous amount of support and leadership for this project. Also, Dr. Remus uh, Arentas, who's in the audience as well, who also was very visionary on this project and also provided a, a, a great amount of resources and leadership um, to help drive this project forward. Um, my wonderful collaborators at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine who do the in vivo work for me. Um, and then um, Dr. Dimitrov at the University of Pittsburgh, who provides the binders to us, and Christina Oshenbauer and John Capps providing the viruses that we use to interrogate CAR T functionality. Um, so, with that, I can take um, any questions, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> oh, sure. John. So, a quick question about your animal model. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I totally understood it, but you mixed the HIV-infected cells, or you infected cells and mixed them with the CAR T cells before you put them into the spleen. And did you ever try an alternative where you put infected cells into the spleen and then waited and then put CAR T cells into the spleen? We haven't tried that yet, but I will tell you we're going to uh, start some new in vivo studies based on FDA recommendations where we will um, try a similar approach, but it will be the reverse. We will actually um, uh, put the CAR T cells there and then do the infection. And the reason why is because we want to mimic what we will do in the clinical trial. Um, with the clinical trial, patients will be R suppressed. They won't have uremia. So we want to put those CAR T cells there and then remove them for the antiretroviral therapy, which viral rebound will incur. So so that's why we tried that approach. And we think it's pretty reasonable to do that. When the mono cars did not control HIV, did they induce resistance? We have not looked for that, um, to, to be honest with you. So you mean like sequencing the envelope in the um, plasma, we haven't done that, but I think that's something that would be good to do just to see if that monocar T, T therapy is failing because of that reason. It's some, definitely something we can do. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.